question today is is the dragnet parable in Matthew 13 47 a picture of the rapture of the church now the only way to understand God's Word is by rightly dividing by asking the who what where when how why type of questions and it helps tremendously to know which of God's dispensations the scripture in question is taking place in now if you'd like to learn how to understand the Bible how to study the Bible take a look at the eight-part series I'm doing called hidden truth you'll find part one through part three already on my channel and there you're gonna learn about rightly dividing dispensations and what they have to do with discernment of God's Word here we have the parable of the dragnet Jesus is explaining the second coming events more importantly he's explaining the order that things will happen at his second coming the parable of the dragnet has two other parallel passages that we've covered already the parable of the wheat and tares and also the passage where Jesus talks about two people in the field one is taken and one is left you can find uh, another study on those two passages in the first video I made in part one and also in the uh, part two video those two videos go over Matthew 24 and Matthew 13 uh, 24 through 30 respectively but now we have another parable the parable of the dragnet in Matthew 13 47 let's go ahead and take a look at it shall we and let's see if I can pull it up here on the screen for you so we can read it together all right and in let's see Matthew 13 47 uh, 13 verse 47 again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind which when it was full they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good vessels but cast the bad away and next here we see Jesus gives the exact reason for this parable his second coming in verse 49 so shall it be at the end of the world now the word world here translates from the Greek as age so this this reads as the end of the age meaning at the end of Daniel's 70th week just prior to the beginning of the 1000 year millennium all right continuing the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just here we see a picture of God's angels at the second coming they will gather all the wicked for destruction meaning death the same order of events as the wheat and the tares and the ones in the field being taken so please watch one in, uh, part one and part two of the rapture series for more information on that now continuing in verse 50 and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth again we see what happens to non-believers at the end of Daniel's 70th week angels gathering them and bringing them to destruction in verse 51 Je Jesus saith unto them have ye understood all these things they say unto him yea Lord so here Jesus is explaining the order in which the good fish and the bad fish will be dealt with the bad fish being unbelievers being taken removed from the earth by the angels and destroyed the good fish or believers will be left on earth and ushered into the earthly kingdom the dragnet parable is another example of the difference in order of events between the second coming and the rapture in the rapture of the body of Christ the good people the believers will be taken from the earth and the non-believers will be left on earth to endure Daniel's 70th week to be dealt with by the Antichrist and the rest of the horrible suffering that's going to occur during that time the rapture's events are the opposite from the second coming where at the end of Daniel's 70th week Jesus will send forth his angels to gather all the bad people from the earth and the good ones will be left to enjoy the kingdom on earth with Jesus for a thousand years now notice also here and this is very important as well that at 
the rapture of the body of Christ, Jesus comes for his people, meeting them in the air. But at the second coming, Jesus sends his angels to gather the people, the bad people, the unsaved, and they're taken to death and destruction. The rapture, Jesus comes to get his body. The second coming, he sends his angels to gather the non-believers. Jesus explains in these three parables that the order of events will be the same as in the days of Noah. In the flood of Noah, the wicked were removed from the earth, while Noah and his family remained on the earth. The same will be true at Jesus' second coming. The wicked are taken and the good remain. This is another reason why the story of Noah's flood is not a picture of the rapture. It's actually the opposite of the rapture. Enoch is a perfect picture of the rapture. He was taken from the earth prior to the flood. God took him. Just like the church will be taken prior to Daniel's 70th week, Jesus will take us. Like Noah and his family, the Jews will be protected during the time of tribulation and the wicked will be killed, destroyed. And ultimately, the angels will come get whoever is left at the second coming and remove them from the earth, completed in death. And then the believers will be left to repopulate the earth once again. Because there will be billions upon billions upon billions of people dying during Daniel's 70th week or seven years. Very few people will make it to the second coming unless they're supernaturally protected and provided for. Although there's obviously some unbelievers who will make it, but will be taken by the angels to their ultimate demise at the end. I hope this clears it up for you a little bit. Please take a look at part one and part two, and also don't forget about the Hidden Truth eight-part series on how to rightly divide to better understand God's Word. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ is your Savior today, then please, I beg you, consider the results of not knowing Him as your Savior. It won't be pleasant, my dear friends. If you want to be sure that no matter what happens, that you'll be in heaven when the time comes, that you'll be caught up from the grips of the coming Antichrist, and be spared from taking part in the worst time ever to hit the earth, worse than Noah's flood, worse than any time in the future, it's going to be hell on earth and you definitely do not want to be here for that. If you sincerely understand that you're on the wrong path, covered in your sins, and you sincerely want to change that path because you realize that you're dead in sin without Christ Jesus, then with sincere conviction and the right motivation, admit that you're lost in sins and tell God that you want him to change you into the person that he wants you to be and that you sincerely believe and trust in Christ Jesus's good news the gospel that he is God in the flesh that he did die on the cross and he did take your sins with him into death and he did on the third day rise from the grave alive and in absolute righteousness and now covers you with that righteousness making you forgiven of all sin and making you righteous in the sight of God covering you with the righteousness of Christ Jesus his only begotten son believe and trust Paul wrote in 1st Corinthians 15 1 through 5 moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also ye received and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye, be, ye have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. And also Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what, what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith, which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you've made a decision to be saved today, please feel free to, to send me a message so I can answer any questions for you. Peace and grace in Christ Jesus be unto you and your families. See you on the next video.